If you've ever been over to Italy, you would know that aside from the spectacular architecture, the beautiful art, uh, the incredible culture that's over there, one of the greatest things that the country has to offer is gelato. Uh, for those of you that don't know, gelato is the Italian version of ice cream. A few years ago, as I was over there, I was hosting a priest friend who was visiting and one of the evenings we were trying to plan out sort of the schedule for the night and part of it was figuring out how to get him back to the pilgrim house that he was staying in. Of course the buses are a bit complicated in the city of Rome and it was a blistering hot day, over a hundred during the day and then of course at night it, it cools off to the upper 90s. As we were sort of scheduling out the evening I proposed that we could potentially stop by a gelato shop as we made our way to get him back to the place that he was staying. And he made the exclamation in that moment, gelato shall fuel my trip home. It's become an ongoing joke with this priest friend that we often refer back to that moment because uh, we both found ourselves laughing so heartily. And yet, I think often we do find ourselves when we're planning trips, we, we want to take snacks, you want food, we need things to actually sustain us for the journey. And we see something no different in today's first reading with the Israelites as they're making their way through the desert. As they complain to Moses, we're told that Moses goes before the Lord, pleads with the Lord for an answer, and the Lord says, all right, I'll, I'll give them bread from heaven. And we're told that the Israelites on a daily basis experience this miracle, that God sustains them as they make their way through the desert with this bread. And of course, in the gospel, we see these people coming to Jesus and referring back to this moment. You know, Moses gave our ancestors this bread from heaven, but Jesus corrects them. He says that it wasn't Moses who gave your ancestors this bread. It was my father. And he says, and this is the true bread from heaven. <clears throat> this bread is the one that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Of course, we know that Jesus in this moment is offering this teaching on the Eucharist. We know that anything that we see in the Old Testament is a foreshadowing. It's a precursor to the fulfillment of that reality in the New Testament, in this new covenant. So just as the Israelites experience this miraculous gift of bread, Jesus is telling his disciples that they aren't just going to experience a miraculous gift of bread, that he's going to give his very self to us that he is going to bring life to the world through the gift of the Eucharist. That is, the Eucharist should be f fueling our trip home, our trip to heaven. Let me be very clear, the Eucharist doesn't fuel our trip home after Mass. Uh, sometimes as a priest, I, I do see people leave right after communion. And it actually is a, a source of deep grief for me. Because anybody that leaves right after communion, it's very clear this person doesn't understand what's really and truly present here. Anybody that thinks, I've got to get out of here, I've got to make sure I beat the rush out of the parking lot, uh, it's a sign that we're losing sight of the miraculous gift that we encounter every single time we come to Mass. That is, every time we come here, we don't just experience a miraculous bread, we actually encounter a miraculous gift of God himself that he chooses to sustain us. He desires to give life to us. And he makes this bold promise that anyone who comes to him shall never hunger. And the one who believes in him shall never thirst. That is, he completely satisfies. He completely satisfies. What would happen if we began to believe even just a little bit of this reality? <laughs> What would happen if we as a church really profess faith in this truth that Jesus is present in the Eucharist? There's a great quotation from St. John Vianney. Uh, he was the patron saint of priests. He was a parish priest in France a few hundred years ago. And sort of referring to this gift and the, the mystery of who the priest is to, to say these words that Jesus might become present in the Eucharist. And St. John Vianney said if the priest actually knew who he was, if he actually knew the reality of what he does, he would die of joy. If the priest actually knew what he was, he would die of joy. I want to die of joy. 
I want to die of joy. And I think we could say the same thing about the Eucharist. If we actually knew the fullness of what is present here in this most blessed sacrament, we would die of joy. We would die of joy if we realize the incredible gift of love that is offered to us every single time we come to Mass. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I invite you to be pleading with Jesus for an increase of faith. Just to be asking our Lord for an increase of faith that we might truly encounter Him present here. That we might see Him in this most blessed sacrament. And then as we receive Him, as we receive the gift of His love, He might sustain us for our journey to our heavenly homeland.